Right, um, talking of decent charity, it's time to talk Paul uh, Alston, uh, former Howard Cabinet Minister. Richard, good morning to you. Morning, Paul. Great to have you with us. And uh, Bruce Hawker, of course, political strategist who is still in New York. Are you going for citizenship, Bruce? <laughs> I'm not coming back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was beginning to wonder. <laughs> Too much fun here. Actually, since you are there, just very quickly, is there much talk now of the fiscal cliff? I know there was a lot of talk about it, and this was the, this was confronting Obama. Is there much talk now? Oh yeah, we're all edging towards it, and uh, the stock market's very upset about it and worried. Of course, we're also edging towards the Middle East and what's happening there too. So the, the, caravan, the presidential campaign caravan's left, it's departed, and it's heading towards that cliff right now. Yeah, all right. So the, so the, the honeymoon was very short-lived. The honeymoon is over. <laughs> um, we'll talk about Israel in a moment, actually. Um, uh, Richard, Julie Bishop has picked up the cudgels uh, with regard to the Julia Gillard and Bruce Wilson affair of so many years ago. And it's got to the point now where she is actually accusing someone, and I'm not entirely sure, of a cover-up as a result of missing documents. Is it time, do you think, to let this go? Well, I think it's probably time for the Prime Minister to actually allow the issue to be fully aired and explored, rather than running away from it or creating uh, distractions uh, on a regular basis. I don't think she's ever been prepared to have a serious discussion about this. I mean, the last time she pretended to have a press conference on one thing and then allowed them to ask questions on this, so questions without notice. Uh, I think that it's probably got a long way to go, this issue. All right, well, there are accusations now being fired from Labor at Julie Bishop herself when she was a lawyer. Um, uh, Barnaby Joyce over the weekend said that all of this was crap, Richard. He said essentially that we're, we're just wasting our time, we should be talking about real issues. Is he right? Well, look, you, you've always got to talk about real issues, but the, the way the media is, of course, <coughs> there are various other aspects. And if the character of a leading politician is an issue, then that has to be either put to bed or, or dealt with in some other way. And uh, certainly the attack on uh, Julie Bishop, which I think she seems to have answered quite effectively this morning, is just another example of trying to change the subject. I mean, that's not Labor getting back onto the real issues. That's Labor yeah. uh, f fighting fire with fire. Uh, do you agree with that, um, Bruce? Uh, you, we had Brendan O'Connor over the weekend essentially fighting fire with fire. Uh, Barnaby Joyce saying the whole thing is just a complete distraction and waste of time. Uh, look, I happen to have the rather old-fashioned view that the public actually wants us to be working on the big issues and not getting into all this nasty you know, character assassination on both sides of politics. I mean, one thing that we know is that uh, the public are just tired of all this. They want the major parties to be out there solving the big issues confronting the nation, cost of living and, and so forth. Uh, I think until someone actually says, you did something wrong and here's the evidence uh, for it, they should shut up because right now there's absolutely nothing to suggest that Julia Gillard has done anything for which she has to answer and that's been her position throughout. Provide evidence that I did something wrong and I'll answer it, otherwise shut up. And I think that's an appropriate position to take. But as I said, I think what they really want is, uh, you know, is, is some bipartisanship by the major parties on the big issues that are confronting the country and uh, a little less of the squabbling. Alright, let's talk about some of that. Uh, and I sort of half agree with you. I just think, you know, with this issue with the $5,000, if she could easily handle it, why don't you handle it? Why doesn't she just say, yep, the $5,000 came in, this is what it was for, it was a gift from so-and-so, whatever, I remember it coming in, what's your accusation? Rather than actually avoiding to uh, avoiding addressing it at all and saying you haven't actually made an accusation. Yeah, well, I, I think in, in this world that we live in, uh, if you want to make an accusation about somebody, you should back it up with evidence to support it. Otherwise, you know, it'll be how how many times you've been beating your mother-in-law sort of questions all the time. Present some evidence to support the proposition and then I think it's entirely appropriate for the Prime Minister to respond. Yeah. Otherwise, let's get on with the big issues. All right, now, um, Julia Gillard's response with regard to Israel, uh, she was quite emphatic, Israel has a right to defend itself. Uh, Bruce, unlike Bob Carr, who said Israel are considerably more powerful than, um, than their, uh, their foe and they should they should sort of resist um, being too obvious with their strikes, which to me seems extraordinary, and it does seem like a very uh, a substantial difference between the two. Is there a potential problem there, do you think, Bruce? 
Well, I, I know Bob Carr very well, and I don't think there's anyone on this planet who's more pro-Israel than him living outside of Israel. Uh, so I think uh, I, I don't think there'll be too much difference between the Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister on this issue. I think what he was saying, though, was something which a lot of us feel very strongly about, and that is that. Uh, you know, let's not forget in all this tension between terrorists and the Israeli government that there are innocent people living in uh, Gaza who are being killed as a result of airstrikes and there are innocent people living in Israel who are also being killed. This is a terrible state of affairs. It's been going on since 1947. It's going to keep going, I dare say, for a long time yet. But uh, I tend to agree with Bob Carr on this one and, the, and by the way, uh, President Obama, who is saying, look, let's just show restraint where we can on this issue. We're much better off not getting into a situation where Gaza is invaded by uh, Israel and we have a repeat of the problems we saw there when that happened last time. Absolutely. Bruce uh, Hawker, thank you very much for joining us. Just quickly uh, to you, Richard, on this. Um, are you of the opinion that Australia should take a very definite stand, should be supporting Israel? Look, I think w w while you've got this intractable problem of one side not even recognising the existence of the other, then it's inevitable Fantastic. that Israel's going to feel fundamentally threatened for its yes. life and uh, I think we therefore have to at least establish that uh, they have every right to protect themselves. Now we don't want overreach but uh, certainly I don't think we can stand by and allow them to uh, be invaded on a regular basis and not do anything about it. Richard Olson, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, and I would agree with that. I think that, that we have to support Israel's right to defend itself. I like it that at least we're standing up and taking notice and the international community is doing something about it, whereas we pick and choose other conflicts yeah. at a whim, it seems, sometimes.